All right, haves and have not fans, this is thankfully my final video before we get any random news between now and Tuesday when the episode airs. I imagine we'll get the sneak peek of Tuesday night's episode. And like I said, unless somebody comes up with a, hey, here's a, um, you know, a synopsis or whatever. Yeah, uh, this is video number 15 I've recorded since I've been awake this morning. So this is pretty much, you know, kind of just a quick thoughts video about the premiere from last week. I've already done the live stream and review, but, you know, after talking with some other fans and, you know, whatnot, it's just the reality. And I know it sounds like a broken record, but since we're actually in the final batch of episodes, it feels right to do another quick video on this. And that's the fact that I don't know if we should expect too much. I mean, like I did last week, uh, last Tuesday, uh, Veronica and Catherine did that interview basically telling fans like, hey, don't expect, you know, everything to be wrapped up just to let you know up front. So that's pretty much a sign to fans like even though the show's ending, not everything's going to be concluded, unfortunately. Too bad we didn't get a foreshadowing warning like this with If Loving You Was Wrong. So before getting into the video, make sure you take a moment to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content to the channel and follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Um, yeah, I wasn't impressed with the premiere. I feel like I honestly don't think anybody was really like, this was great. Um, no, uh, at, at best, looking at the comments in my review, at best, there were people who were like, it wasn't great, but it was okay. It was good. But everybody seems to agree that far too much time was wasted on the Jeffrey and Madison stuff, whether it be when they were at the restaurant, back at Madison's place, back when Colby was talking with Madison and hell, even when Pearl was talking to David, almost half the damn episode was dedicated to that random, oh, he's dead, it's my fault, yada, yada, it, it was just bull crap. It's so dumb because of the fact that we've seen the ingenuity of Tyler Perry in his more recent projects. You can just tell that the haves and the have nots was oh, it's almost like that that TLC, that 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 effort put into the show is gone. You can tell that this was written at the time where you know what? I put in my two-week notice. This is just the final stretch of episodes. Let's just end the series while I go focus on my Viacom stuff. And yes, uh, like the season ones of a bunch of his Viacom shows may not have been perfect. We're seeing massive improvements in pacing, writing, and whatnot in the more recent series of like, well, seasons of uh, some of the shows that are out now, like House of Pain and whatnot. So I feel like what made the first episode of the haves and the have not so bad is that it set the tone for the final episode showing us that we're going to get more of the same because watching that one episode of the haves and the have nots felt like a major regression compared to sisters or the oval. And I'm not saying those shows are perfect, but I think we can agree for the most part it's better than what we got with the haves and the have nots because remember these episodes were done damn near two years ago at this point so obviously the writing styles aren't the same the pacing isn't the same the overall quality isn't the same so i feel realistically i'm not saying every single episode is going to be like this first episode but like i said it definitely set the tone of what's to come and if this first episode was poorly paced and whatnot, who's to say the upcoming episodes won't follow the same trend where we'll spend 20 to 30 minutes on a couple of characters, we'll randomly go to other places and almost like copy and paste scenes as in or cut and paste scenes where, oh, this one scene that doesn't even fit the mood or tone of the episode is going to be put here. That way we know what this character is up to. But even if there is a death in every episode, I don't even think it matters if that character who dies is only focused on for like two minutes. And then we got like people moping around about their death for like 20 minutes. And then we go to something else to wrap up the episode. I just think that having all these redundant characters who were added to the cast for no particular reason, eating up so much screen time is taking away well, time from the characters we really care about. Like, for example, watching that trailer for the upcoming episodes, then watching the first episode last week. I have a question for you. 
Who among you believe that we're actually going to meet William, Jeffrey's real father? At this point, I don't think we will. Again, I could be completely wrong, but I don't see anything about these episodes that scream we're going to meet Jeffrey's real father. Because even if he shows up at this point, the show is so all over the place, it, it, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Same thing with um, uh, Derek. I mean, he got arrested. We haven't heard or seen anything from him. I mean, if we do get another Laura and Samuel scene, I could see them possibly bringing up Derek's name. Like, you know, hey, we'll give him a report or something. But even then, I don't even think it's going to matter. Again, Derek could show up, but I, I just, there hasn't been any characters asking about him or looking for him, so I doubt it. We know the Malones are going to be prominent, like the major big bads and whatnot. We know Veronica is going to be up to her same antics, but overall, I just feel like seven episodes definitely isn't enough to wrap things up. We know not everything is going to be wrapped up, so I honestly don't know. I just feel like uh, the premiere was definitely a dud, and I feel like even though I'm definitely interested to see what each episode is going to bring it just doesn't seem to matter as much because we know not everything's going to get a proper conclusion. And overall, it's like, damn, you know, yeah, kind of like The Flash or other TV shows that have kind of, you know, outstayed their welcome or at the very least hasn't quite outstayed its welcome. But the fact that it isn't it isn't the same. It's almost like the haves and the have nots is go into a restaurant to get your favorite meal. And then you haven't been there for a while. You've tried other cuisine, but then you go back. You order that same meal, but it just doesn't taste the same. It's like, you know, there was a change in the recipe. There's a new cook in the kitchen. It's under new management. But the thing is, Tyler Perry is still in charge of the haves and the have-nots. But the problem is, he was managing other restaurants, Sisters, The Oval, and whatnot, over in another county, Viacom. And as a result, what used to be his, uh, you know, top dish has now become leftovers where you can kind of reheat it up and it might not taste as good as when it first came out of the oven. Damn, now I'm starving, but that was one hell of an analogy for the haves and the have nots. So let's ride through these final seven episodes. Um, I just hope that it does get better instead of worse, but like I said, this first episode has, it left much to be desired. Even Justin's death wasn't enough to save the episode for me. It honestly wasn't. But I see that we're probably going to have these episodes. Probably why people are probably going to be killed off left and right. Because that way certain characters won't be missing in every damn episode. So let me know what you think. Like I said, I've done a decent amount of haves and have not videos in this one sitting. But uh. We'll talk about it more in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to donate, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App.